Yo, Adam Saxon with Guy in the Cube, another week, another roundup. Last week seemed a little slower than most weeks, but we still have some great content for you. If you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos from both Patrick and myself. And with that, let's dig in. Baz over at the How To Power BI YouTube channel has got a video looking at how do we get today to always be the selective value of a given slicer. And what I really like about this video is more the concept of extending a central date table to include other metadata about your dates. And then you can use that metadata in creative ways such as this. I don't necessarily know that having a slicer with every date in your date table is realistic or good from a design perspective, but the concept of extending that date table to include other metadata that you can then filter or slice on is wonderful. So check out the video over at YouTube. We've got a link up above and down below in the description. Reed Havens has got a video for you over at the Havens Consulting YouTube channel where he's looking at how do you take a card visual and add a hover effect that gives you more information. So like a tooltip on a card with hover. It's not what you would think it is. This is actually taking advantage of the fact that buttons actually potentially make better cards than the card visual, or at least give you additional options that you can play around with. And the hover effect is one of those things. And so I like what he did here, where when you hover over it, it gives you addition, it changes the actual data of the card to give you different insights. So adds for a little interactivity with the report and makes for clean design as well. So I definitely appreciate that. So if you're curious about how he did this or what exactly he's doing with the card visual, check out the video again up above, down below in the description, along with links to all the items in this week's roundup, including some bonus items. So go check it out. Chris Hamill's got a design blog for Power BI looking at handling hierarchies from a slicer perspective. He calls out the hierarchy slicer and says, look, if you've got more than three or four items that you're going to deal with from a hierarchy perspective, then this isn't necessarily the route that you want to go with. But he calls out an issue he faced when helping to create a report for the Cloud9 esports team where he had to deal with this and using the hierarchy slicer for just those few items from a design perspective wasn't a great thing. And so he came up with an approach of, again, using buttons, bookmarks, selections to help make that visual flow just better from a design perspective. If you're curious about what he did and how he went through it and the different effects that the button gives you, go ahead and check out the link down in the description below. And he's got a link to a Power BI desktop file that you can download as well. Matthew Roach has got a blog looking at standardizing on Power BI, at least from his perspective and his thoughts on this topic, like why an organization would want to go and standardize on Power BI. And I've really enjoyed Matthew's blogs and videos looking at data culture, standardization, and so on and so forth. He just offers all of these thoughts from a strategic perspective that make you think a little bit deeper about these topics and not just the how to. I also love the new phrase that he coined, pain balancing. And so when you've got pain with multiple BI tools or any tools in your organization, there's pain that's associated with dealing with those multiple tools and having to balance that pain for different reasons, whether it's money, whether it's just knowledge of those tool sets and different folks that influence those decisions, that's something you need to consider. And Matthew talks about that in this blog, which I definitely recommend you read and internalize a little bit to understand how that affects your organization. There was a blog on the Power BI blog last week that was interesting to me in the sense that it talking about geographic availability for the given services on the power platform and dynamics. The Azure website has been doing this for a long time in terms of being able to actually see on the website which services are available in which region. And from a, you know, the power platform and dynamics side of this, this was kind of handled in a PDF, which was hard to maintain and update quickly. And so they've gone ahead and updated the website to include a report that gives you this information. I checked out the report, it's pretty interesting, but it gives you a quick high level availability of where these items are in the world, which data center. So whether it's Power BI, Power BI Embedded, and other items, Azure Analysis Services, Power Apps, Power Automate, you can go and quickly see which data regions are these services available. And I'm assuming they will update this as it goes, that would make sense. 
So if you are curious about which data region services are available in, definitely check out this blog, which points to the website that has the Power BI report inside of it. All right, I wanna hand this over to you. What was your favorite item this last week? Maybe it was something I mentioned. Maybe it was something I didn't. Let me know in the comments below. I wanna hear it. If you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. Smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as always from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome and we'll see you in the next video.